Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss an important topic that is types of ecosystems. The main objectives of this lecture are understanding of the different types of ecosystems, study of natural ecosystem and artificial ecosystems, characteristics of ecosystems and diversity of flora and fauna of major ecosystems. First of all, let us define the term ecosystem. The term ecosystem was proposed by A. G. Tansley in 1935, who defined it as the system resulting from the integration of all the living and non-living factors of environment. Ecosystems include the whole complex of physical factors forming the environment. An ecosystem is an overall integration of whole mosaic of interacting organisms and their environment. The terms ecosystem is most preferred, where eco implies the environment and system implies an interacting interdependent complex. Ecosystem is a structural and functional unit of biosphere consisting of community of living beings and the physical environment, both interacting and exchanging materials between them. It includes plants, trees, animals, fish, birds, microorganisms, water, soil and people. Ecosystem vary greatly in size and elements, but each is a functional unit of nature. It is normally an open system with a continuous but variable influx and loss of materials and energy. It is basic functional unit with no limits of boundaries consisting of both biotic and abiotic components interacting with each other, both necessary for maintenance of life upon earth. Therefore, it represents the highest level of energy based ecological interaction. Everything that lives in an ecosystem is dependent on the other species and elements that are also part of their ecological community. If one part of an ecosystem is damaged or disappears, it has an impact on everything else. When an ecosystem is healthy, that is sustainable, it means that all the elements live in balance and are capable of reproducing themselves. Ecosystem can be as small as a single tree or as large as entire forest. Now let us discuss various types of ecosystems. First, natural ecosystem. These operate by themselves under natural conditions without any major interference by man. A natural ecosystem is a community of living and non-living entities and occur freely in nature. Every component interacts together as a combined unit through physical, chemical and biological processes. The discriminating factor of natural ecosystems from other ecosystems is that they are completely natural. Their interactions in no way are influenced by human activity as seen in the case of artificial ecosystems. The components of natural ecosystems that bring about these interactions are soil, sunlight, air, water, plants, animals and microorganisms. Each of these factors of the ecosystem is associated either directly or indirectly. For example, a fluctuation in the temperature levels 
affects the growth of plants. Examples of natural ecosystems, deserts, virgin rainforests, the abysmal plain are a few examples of naturally occurring ecosystems. They are majorly devoid of human existence, thereby enabling these sites to continue existing in their natural state. However, these ecosystems with time undergo changes in the event of environmental changes regardless of human existence. Terrestrial ecosystems. Terrestrial ecosystems are exclusively land-based ecosystems. There are different types of terrestrial ecosystems distributed around various geological zones like forest ecosystems, grassland ecosystems, tundra ecosystems, desert ecosystems. Now forest ecosystem. A forest ecosystem consists of several plants, animals and microorganisms that live in coordination with the abiotic factors of the environment. Forests help in maintaining the temperature of the earth and are the major carbon sink. The forests are natural plant communities with dominance of flowering plants, trees, shrubs, herbs and climbers are present in plenty. Some examples of forest ecosystems are Tropical Rainforest such forests are located in equatorial region of earth such as in Congo river basin of Africa, Central America etc. The annual rainfall is 140 centimeter and average annual temperature exceeds 18 degrees Celsius. These forests are characterized by warm and humid climate, broad leaves and tall plants. Abundance of insects and invertebrates and high diversity of tree species. Number second, tropical savannas forest. Such forests are located in Africa, Southeast America, Southeast Asia, Australia and some other parts of India. Where Rainfall is seasonal but high, about 100 centimeter to 150 centimeter. These forests are characterized by dry and wet seasons alternatively. Warm climate having dominantly found species in this ecosystem like elephant, zebra, giraffe, kangaroo only in Australia extra. Number third, temperate forest. Such forests are found in eastern regions of Asia and USA, north central Europe extra. The annual rainfall is about 75 centimeter to 150 centimeter and average temperature is not more than 20 degrees Celsius. These forests are characterized by Abundance of insects and birds, tall deciduous trees, dominance of hard trees for furniture and building purposes and common species found in this ecosystem like frogs, lizards, rabbits, snakes, deers, bears, etc. Number 4, taiga or boreal forest. Such forests are found across east-west band of North Europe, North Asia and North America and in close vicinity below 60 degree north latitude to where the climate is cold. The annual rainfall varies from 10 cm to 35 cm and average temperature ranges between 6 degree Celsius in winter to 20 degrees Celsius in summer. 
these forests are characterized by cold climate due to high altitudes and high latitudes dominated by conifers which are important source for making paper, pulp and lumber. Common species found in this ecosystem birds, owl, eagles, migratory birds, animals, foxes, rabbits, deers, squirrels, etc. Vegetation, pines, cedars, larches, etc. Number 5. Temperate shrub forest. These are also called Mediterranean shrub forests. Such forests are found in South Africa, South Australia, along the Mediterranean Kyle and coast of California, etc., where the rainfall is winter only. Rain is less and temperature is moderate. These forests are characterized by dry climate with moist air, vegetation is broad leaves and of resinous plants such as rubber. The common species found in this ecosystem are reptiles, small mammals, large mammals, etc. Now we will discuss grassland ecosystem. In a grassland ecosystem, the vegetation is dominated by grasses and herbs. Temperate grasslands, savanna grasslands are some of the examples of grassland ecosystems. These are found in both temperate and tropical regions of the world. This area comprises of grasses with a little amount of shrubs and trees. Main vegetation is grasses, legumes and members of composite family. Many grazing animals, herbivores and insectivores are found in grasslands. There are different types of grasslands. The first, the steppes of Asia and Europe. Second, the prairies of USA and Canada. Third, the welts of Africa. Four, the pampas of South Africa. Now we will discuss tundra ecosystem. Tundra ecosystem are treeless regions found in the Arctic and on the tops of mountains, where the climate is cold and windy and rainfall is scant. Tundra lands are covered with snow for much of the year, but summer brings bursts of wild flowers. The plants and animals in tundras are mountain goats, sheep, marmots, and birds live in mountain or alpine tundra and feed on the low-lying plants and insects. Hardy flora like cushion plants survive in the mountain zones by growing in rock depressions where it is warmer and they are sheltered from the wind. Tundra ecosystems are devoid of trees and are found in cold climates or where rainfall is scarce. These are covered with snow for most of the year. The ecosystem in the Arctic or mountain tops is tundra type. The Arctic tundra where the average temperature is minus 30 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 34 to minus 6 degrees Celsius supports a variety of animal species including arctic foxes, polar bears, grey wolves, caribou, snow geese and musk oxen. The summer growing season is just 50 to 60 days. When the sun shines up to 24 hours a day, the relatively few species of plants and animals 
that live in the harsh conditions of the tundra are essentially clinging to life. They are highly vulnerable to environmental stresses like reduced snow cover and warmer temperatures brought on by global warming. Dear students, now let us discuss about desert ecosystems. Deserts are found throughout the world. These are regions with very little rainfall. The days are hot and the nights are cold. Desert ecosystems occur in regions with an annual rainfall of less than 25 centimeters. A significant portion of land, about 17 percent, is occupied by the deserts. Due to high temperature, intense light and low water availability, flora and fauna are poorly developed. Temperature may range from very hot as in hot deserts to very cold in cold deserts. Major hot deserts of the world in the Sahara Arabia, Gobi deserts, complex extending from Africa to Central Asia and contains highly irregular and very insignificant rainfall and low humidity due to excess evaporation. The cold deserts occur at high elevations where the temperatures are low and rainfall scanty. As the air loses all its moisture content, as it ascends higher and higher, cold deserts occur in Ladakh regions of Himalayas, Tibet and Bolivia Arctic. The producers are mainly bushes, shrubs, some grasses and few trees. Leaves and stems are modified to conserve water. The best known desert plants are the succulents, spiny leaved cacti. Consumers are commonly insects, reptiles, birds, camels and are adapted to the xeric conditions. Dear students, now let us discuss about aquatic ecosystem. An aquatic ecosystem is an ecosystem located in a body of water. Communities of organisms that are dependent on each other and on their environment live in aquatic ecosystems. There are two main types of aquatic ecosystems. Number one, marine ecosystems and number second, freshwater ecosystems. Let us discuss about marine ecosystems. Those aquatic ecosystems whose waters possess a high salt content out of all of the types of ecosystems on the planet, marine ecosystems are the most prevalent. They team with life providing nearly half of the earth's oxygen and a home for a wide array of species. Marine ecosystems cover approximately 71 percent of the earth's surface and contain approximately 97 percent of the planet's water. They are distinguished from freshwater ecosystems by the presence of dissolved compounds especially salts in the water. Approximately 85 percent of the dissolved materials in seawater are sodium and chlorine. Seawater has an average salinity of 35 parts per thousand of water. Salinity varies among different marine ecosystems. Marine ecosystems can be divided into these zones. Oceanic, the relatively shallow part of the ocean that lies over the continental shelf, profoundal, bottom or deep water, benthic, 
that means bottom substrates intertidal the area between high and low tides estuaries salt marshes coral reefs and hydrothermal vents where chemosynthetic sulfur bacteria form the food base now the classes of organisms found in marine ecosystems include brown algae dinoflagellates corals cephalopods echinoderms and sharks fish caught in marine ecosystems are the biggest source of commercial foods obtained from wild populations scientists have subcategorized marine ecosystem into six types which includes open marine ecosystems this category includes types of sea life that float or swim such as algae plankton jellyfish and whales many creatures living in the open ocean inhabit the upper layer of the ocean where the sun's rays penetrate this is known as the euphotic zone and extends to a depth of about 150 meters that's 500 feet ocean floor ecosystems marine life not only exists in the open ocean waters but on its floor as well species that live in this ecosystem include certain types of fish crustaceans clams oysters worms urchins seaweed and smaller organisms then coral reef ecosystems coral reefs are a special subtype of sea floor ecosystem which are found only in warm tropical wat waters and at relatively shallow depths coral reefs are among the most productive ecosystems on the planet about 1 quarter of marine species depend on coral reefs for food shelter or both then estuary ecosystem the term estuary typically describes the shallow sheltered area of a river mouth where fresh water intermingles with salt water as it enters the sea although the term can also refer to other areas with flowing brackish waters such as lagoons or glades the degree of salinity varies with the tides and the volume of outflow from the river the organisms inhabiting estuaries are specially adapted to these distinct conditions hence the diversity of species tends to be lower than in the open ocean now let us discuss about salt water wetland estuary ecosystems salt water wetlands may be considered a special type of estuary as they also consists of a transition zone between land and sea these wetlands can be divided into two categories number 1 salt water swamps and number 2 salt marshes the swamps and marshes differ in that the former are dominated by trees while the later are dominated by grasses or reeds now let us discuss about mangrove ecosystems some tropical and subtropical coastal areas are home to special types of salt water swamps known as mangroves mangroves may be considered part of shoreline ecosystems or estuary ecosystems mangrove swamps are characterized by trees that tolerate a saline environment whose root systems extend 
above the water line to obtain oxygen, presenting a maze-like web. Mangroves host a wide diversity of life including sponges, shrimp, crabs, jellyfish, fish, birds and even crocodiles. Now we will discuss about freshwater ecosystem. Any water body having a low salt concentration, usually less than 1% is called a freshwater body. Animals as well as plants in these fresh waters are adapted to the low salt concentrations and are unable to survive high concentration of salt present in oceans. Fresh water ecosystems cover 0.80% of the earth's surface and inhabit 0.009% of its total water. They generate nearly 3% of its net primary production. Freshwater ecosystems contain 41% of the world's known fish species. Now, the types of freshwater habitat. Freshwater habitats occupy a relatively small portion of Earth's surface as compared to marine and terrestrial habitats. However, they play a far more important role for humans because they are the cheapest and the most convenient source of water for industrial as well as domestic needs. Second, they are the bottleneck of the hydrological cycle. Third, they are a convenient and cheapest sinks for waste disposal systems. Now, let us discuss lentic ecosystem. These include slow moving water including pools, ponds and lakes. Ponds, these are a specific type of freshwater ecosystems that are largely based on the autotroph algae which provide the base tropic level for all life in the area. The largest predator in a pond ecosystem will normally be a fish and in between range smaller insects and microorganisms. It may have a scale of organisms from small bacteria to big creatures like water snakes, beetles, water bugs, frogs, tadpoles and turtles. Now, lotic ecosystem, these include rapidly moving water, for example, streams and rivers. Lotic aquatic systems are the fresh water bodies with flowing waters. Water in lotic system in a state of constant motion, rivers and streams are the most common examples of such ecosystems. The basic function of lotic water bodies is assumed to carry the excess of rainwater back to the sea. It is estimated that the amount of water that these lotic bodies carry to the oceans amounts to approximately 25 centimeter of rains that can be distributed evenly on the land surface. Now, we will discuss about wetlands. These are the areas where the soil is saturated or inundated for at least part of the time. Wetlands comprise areas that transition between terrestrial land areas and aquatic that is water areas. The wetlands ecosystem represents a rich diverse web of plants and animals interacting together. Wetland ecosystems also exhibit great sensitivity to disturbance from outside influence, particularly by human development and environmental damage. 
wetland ecosystems provide the world with natural storm barriers, environmental cleansers and food and water resources for many forms of life. Some types of wetlands include marshes, fens, bogs, riparian wetlands, swamps and estuaries. Now we will discuss about artificial ecosystems. They are also called man-made or man-engineered ecosystems. They are maintained artificially by man, whereby addition of energy and planet manipulation, natural balance is disturbed regularly. For example, cropplands such as sugarcane, maize, wheat, rice fields, orchards, gardens, villages, steeds, dams, aquarium and manned spaceship. An artificial ecosystem is not self-sustaining and the ecosystem would perish without human assistance. For example, a farm is an artificial ecosystem that consists of plants and species of outside their natural habitat. Without humans, this ecosystem could not sustain itself. The plants and animals need the help of humans to eat and survive. The comparison between the natural and artificial ecosystem, there are several differences between natural and artificial ecosystems including sustainability, diversity and purpose. A natural ecosystem has a diverse amount of species and plants whereas artificial ecosystems are limited. Natural ecosystems are self-sustaining and result from spontaneous natural reaction while Artificial ecosystems require the assistance of humans. So, dear students, this was all about today's topic. Hope you have enjoyed it well. Thank you for watching.